Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students welcome to today's lecture in last few lectures we have been discussing the quantum mechanical solution of hydrogen atom problem we have discussed the eigen values of hydrogen atom the energy levels the emission spectra and we have also started discussing the eigen functions in particular we are paying close attention to the radial functions of the hydrogen atom eigen function and so in in our last class we discuss radial functions for 1s and 2s orbitals and today we would continue our discussion and would look for would try to find the radial solution for one uh, wave function of a hydrogen atom where l is not zero so our ex first example that we would consider in today's class is when i want to obtain r21 so this is 2p orbital because n is 2 the principal quantum number and l the azimuthal quantum number is 1 this is the general definition of the radial wave function you see 1 over r multiplied by rho to the power l plus 1 where rho is the dimensionless coordinate given by uh, this relation over here where z is the nuclear charge in case of hydrogen atom it is 1 in case of other hydrogen like atoms for example helium plus or lithium di plus in those cases z will be greater than 1 divided by a n a is the Bohr's radius n is again the principal quantum number multiplied by r. So, this quantity is rho we have to do this rho to the power l plus 1 since l is 1 therefore, we would have l plus 1 as 2. So, we would essentially write z over a n uh, square r square because r to the power l plus 1 multiplied by e to the power minus rho where rho is z over 2 a r here n is n will uh, next time when we write we will make this n is 2 n as 2. So, this is the exponential function one of the two asymptotic solutions that this one was one asymptotic solution this is the other asymptotic solution and now we would look at the main body solution of the uh, Eigen function which is given by the power series expansion. So, when you see here j goes from 0 to n minus l minus 1 since n is 2 l is 1 2 minus 1 minus 1 is 0. So, therefore, I have I am left with only one term in this series expansion and that term is b 0 which is which is a constant. So, I still do not know this constant. So, I bring this uh, to the left hand side and I see 1 over r multiplied by r square. So, that will give me r multiplied by. So, this is the radial function corresponding to 2 p orbital. What do I see? I see a constant b 0 the unknown I already know how would I get this unknown I would simply uh, normalize this function when I normalize this function and make it 1 I would determine the value of b 0 I would encourage you to do this uh, for yourself multiplied this so this constant is uh, obtained from by normalization multiplied by this term where z is the nuclear charge and a is Bohr's radius. So, therefore, this is also a constant. So, these two uh, terms are constants and now we have the functional dependence of this radial function is, is given by this equation over here. This shows that the radial function is, is r multiplied by an exponentially decaying function. So, now we have if we want to uh, plot r 2 1 as a function of r. So, r can go from 0 to infinite you can see that this function would never become negative because we have r and uh, which, which should be a positive term and then this is an exponentially decaying function. When r goes to 0 unlike the s orbitals whether 1 s or 2 s unlike s orbitals since when r goes to 0 this function will become 0 because I have this term. For lower value of r, 
R term will dominate. So, we would see a, an R type of rise, but as we go higher and higher value of R, then we see that there is this exponentially decaying function which will overcome and then at the at the end we would get something like this. There will be a long tail uh, which which would reflect the the decaying function of uh, e to the power minus z by over 2 a. And one more thing to note is that we do not have any nodal structure in this case because this 0 that comes is, is the asymptotic solution and this 0 which comes as very r value of, uh, very large value of r also an asymptotic solution for the intermediate value of r we do not see any node. So, therefore, 2 p orbital we see that there are no radial nodes. Just to remind you 1 s orbital also did not have a radial node whereas, 2 s orbital had a radial node. So, in this way using this general expression we can write down the radial part of the hydrogen atoms eigen function for any value of n for any value of l. We would now look we would now look at some general features of this wave function that is given by uh, this radial wave function that is given by this relation. One thing that you would notice here, we have these two terms rho to the power l plus 1. So, rho has a direct dependence on r multiplied by the constants. We will for the moment we will not be worried about the constants and we will look at the functional uh, forms of this uh, radial wave functions. We have 1 over r multiplied by rho to the power l plus 1, where rho is this constant multiplied by r. So, in essence I have r to the power l plus 1 divided by r. So, therefore, this I will get from this term I will get a r to the power l kind of term, where l is the orbital angular momentum of the electron multiplied by e to the power minus rho which is again e to the power minus some constant multiplied by r, but mind you this constant depends actually on the value of n. So, I have one r to the power l term another exponentially decaying function and then I have this polynomial the uh, power from the power series expansion. Let us first look at r to the power l when l is 0 I have this term becoming 1 for l equals 0. For all other values of l when l is 1 or 2 or 3 I have r square or r cube kind of term. So, when r to the power 0 is there when r so when the term is r to the power 0 or a constant when the value of r becomes 0 this function does not become radial function does not become 0. When does that happen? that happens when l equals 0 that means all s type of orbitals. So, we have seen that for s type of orbital 1 s, 2 s, 3 s and so on and so forth the radial part of the wave function does not vanish at r equals 0. On the other hand when we have l equals 1 or 2 we will have r dependence or r square dependence or r cube dependence at low value of r. So, this is for the lower value of r. As soon as r the distance between the electron and nucleus increases the second term the exponentially decaying term dominates. So, this is the asymptotic solution for the long long value uh, long range of r that means large value of r. In that case you would see that this function will be a decaying function. As I increase my n when n is large that means, instead of I am talking about now 1 s, 2 s, 3 s, 4 s where n is increasing or 2 p, 3 p, 4 p where n is increasing. So, when I increase my n I see n becomes larger. So, therefore, this function becomes slower, uh, 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 smaller and therefore, what I would experience is a slow decay of this function. This, this exponentially decaying function will have a slower decay for larger value of n. What does that mean? That means, when n is, is large my wave function the radial part of the wave function will serve, survive even for larger value of r. That means, higher principal quantum number would allow the electrons to stay farther away from the nucleus small r is the distance between the electron and the nucleus. 
So, these are the two asymptotic solution. Now, the main body solution of this problem is given by this power series. You would see that depending on the value of n and l, I have this polynomial which would come out. So, what will be the order of this polynomial? This the order of this polynomial is going to be n minus l minus 1. So, you would have seen this when 1 s orbital it was 1 minus 0 minus 1. So, it was 0 third that means, it was a constant when it was 2 s it was 2 minus 0 minus 1. So, it was b 0 plus b 1 row. So, it was a first order term we had a first order term and so on when you go for higher values of n you would see higher order polynomials coming out. But I have the order of polynomial here as n minus l minus 1 and then when I solve these polynomials I would find actually n minus l minus 1 number of roots for this that means, at n minus l minus 1 number of times or number of places this radial this function will become 0 this polynomial will become 0 and when this polynomial becomes 0 the radial part of the wave function will also become 0 and then I will get a node and these nodes will be called radial nodes. So, we see that from this series expansion I am expecting n minus l minus 1 number of no radial nodes in my orbitals. This will discuss here what we show is the the functional form of hydrogen atoms radial functions. So, this we have already seen r 1 0 which is some constant multiplied by an exponentially decaying function where this decays over minus z r by a. Look at 2 s I have a polynomial of a first order and how at how many places this function will become 0? Of course, you know that this will become 0 at one value of r and that is the well uh, that is the value of um, And when we look at uh, when we look at 3 s. So, in this uh, discussion let us focus on 1 s, 2 s and 3 s. So, we we'll, when I compare one, uh, 2 s and 3 s I see that 3 s orbital has has a polynomial of, of second order and then you would see that at two different values of r this function will be polynomial will become 0 and therefore, r 3 0 will have two radial nodes. This is what is depicted here in this diagram taken from the molecular quantum mechanics book by Atkins. You see for 1 s orbital the function is an exponentially decaying function. For 2 s you see in our uh, previous lecture we discussed at, at this at this value of rho we experience a node and after that when r is actually greater than uh, 2a over z and in those in that situation we have the function becoming negative and then after when when we go to larger value of rows the exponential function will dominate and then this function approaches to zero asymptotically so this is 2s orbital it's radial uh, function and we see one node and here i have zero nodes in case of 3 s I see that there are two different places where I experience the wave function will become 0 and how would I get that? It is simple I just have to take this polynomial and find the roots of this and I would see that there are two values of r where this will become 0. So, therefore, 3 s has again two number of radial nodes. Why do oh, we saw that the number of radial nodes turned out to be n minus l minus 1 and in case of 1 s it is 1 minus 0 minus 1 it is 1 in case of 2 s it sorry for 1 s it is 0 for 2 s it this value is 1 and for 3 s it is 2. So, we see that the functional forms that we get have some physical justification and using them we can derive the location uh, of the, the radial nodes for different functions. We would now look at instead of looking uh, we so far we discussed the uh, 
s type of orbitals, please note that in all, all the s orbitals at r equals 0, the radial function is not 0, rather it has got some finite value, because when r becomes 0, we would have some constant that would come up here. Now, we will look at some other functions. Here, I am showing the uh, radial functions for 2 p orbital, 3 p orbital and 3 d orbital. Let us first look at 2 p. 2 p is given as this function. We have just de derived the functional form of this leaving aside the constants. We see that we have this r multiplied the, by the exponentially decaying function. So, you can see at lower value of r, this r term dominates. The, at, so, at r equals 0, so therefore, the function becomes 0 and after certain some time when r becomes moderately large, the exponential function dominates and we see that the function is pulled down and brought asymptotically to val the value of 0. So, the radial part of the function again becomes 0 at very large of large value of rho. Unlike s orbital, the p orbitals radial function becomes 0 at r equals 0. But here again we notice that there are no nodes. The value of 0 that we see are asymptotic uh, solutions are, uh, uh, where they, they become 0, but in the intermediate region we see no radial nodes. So, there are no radial nodes here. Now, let us look at 3 p uh, orbital which is here 3 n is 3 l is 1 and now again I see here this function. This is I have a polynomial multiplied by an exponentially decaying function. When you look at these two terms, we have some constant multiplied by r and r square. So, I can take r common out of this. So, I have simply z by a minus z square by 6 a square r. So, it is essentially when r goes to 0, this function becomes 0, 3 p function 0. And how many radial nodes can I expect? Since I have uh, a polynomial of the first order. So, I have one node. So, this is the node in the 3 p. What, how can I find the value of this node? I would make when I make this uh, find the root of this uh, polynomial over here, I will see that the value of r, I will find I can find out the value of r where this function is 0, this polynomial is 0 and therefore, that would be the place where this radial function will develop a node. And we will see that at moderate value of r, the radial function becomes negative and then at larger value of r, the exponential function dominates and then the radial part of the function approaches to 0 asymptotically. So, again we see that number of nodes that we see should be n minus l minus 1. So, we have looked at 3 p which should have one node and now let us look at 3 d. So, where l is 2, when l is 2, you see the functional form is apart from the constants, the functional form is r square. We discussed that, that since it has l value of 2, it should have r to the power l type term of term that is true and multiplied by an exponentially decaying function. So, where the decaying function is, it, it the function decays slowly because it is minus z r divided by 3 a because of this 3. So, now let us look at small value of r at r equals 0, this function becomes 0 because of r square term and we should not find any node from this uh, function that is true in case of 3 d. As you see for small value of r in case of 2 p and 3 p, we saw this function increasing as r term, but here we see the function increasing as r square and eventually the exponentially decaying function dominates and it pulls down the radial part of the wave function to become 0 as at asymptotic limit. And in this case again we have 0 node, because we see 3 d 3 minus 2 minus 1 for d orbital l is 2. So, this becomes 0. So, therefore, I have 0 node here, 0 node here and uh, 1 node. Mind you all these nodes are the radial nodes. So, we looked at the forms of this uh, radial functions. 
Now, what we would do is that we would, if you remember, we took the total wave function and expressed it as product of two functions, one radial, another angular function, and we said that the angular function is the spherical harmonics, which are the eigen functions of the angular momentum operator. And the radial part of the solution is something that we had been discussing. The angular part of the solution we have already discussed in great details when you were discussing angular momentum operator and its uh, Eigen function. We have now we will combine the two the radial solution and the angular solution and we will first discuss this for s orbital. Uh, here I am showing the radial solution of one s orbital and the angular part of the solution is when uh, this is since my psi n l m would be r n l y l m. So, for these three quantum numbers n l m, I have my radial function depends on n and l and angular functions depend on l and m. L connects the radial and the angular part this l quantum number. So, since I have one is s orbital or for, for that matter I can write r 2 0. I have r 1 0 y 0 0, r 2 0 y 0 0, r 3 0 y 0 0. So, this is 1 s, this is 2 s, this is 3 s, because for s orbitals l value is 0 and when l is 0, m is only one possible value for m and that is also 0. So, now if I know the radial functions, I simply multiply the angular functions the spherical harmonics and then I have I find the final function of the final form of the Eigen function of hydrogen atom. Now, let us look at uh, the s type of orbital. The angular component of the s orbital is actually independent of any theta or phi. If we uh, if you recall we discussed that this function y 0 0 is constant throughout the th theta and phi space. Uh, so, in the spherical coordinate system, we had this is 0. Suppose, we defined our x, y, z like this and the angle that it made with theta, uh, z axis is, is theta and the angle that it made with the projection of this point to the x, y plane is, is phi, phi goes from 0 to 2 pi and theta goes from 0 to pi and this value is r. So, the radial function defines the r dependence, the distance between the dependence on the distance between electron and nucleus. No matter what value of r we are, suppose we fixed one value of r, that means this is my nucleus and this is where electron, I can choose the value of r and the dependence of this r is dependence of this r is already defined in this uh, radial function. I can choose a particular value of r and then decide to go around the theta x theta uh, space that is from 0 to pi and go around the phi space that is 0 to 2 pi for this 1 s orbital or 2 s uh, orbital and so on so forth. When I do that since the angular part of the solution is constant throughout theta and phi space. So, therefore, what I am going to get is that I will have a constant distribution of the, the total wave function all over theta and phi space and when I translate that to a geometric space you would see that I will have a sphere. This sphere is coming because I have equal distribution or constant distribution of the s orbitals angular wave function, but remember this radial function has, has r dependence whereas, theta and phi are constant throughout. So, therefore, we have we will develop we will get a, a spherical shape for the s orbitals whether it is 1 s, 2 s, 3 s does not matter as long as it is an s it will have spherical uh, shape. But what happens how do we distinguish 1 s and 2 s we will discuss that in a moment's time, but for any s type of orbital the shape of the function is, is spherical. Now, what we do is that we would further move to the case of p orbital. Again the same analogy, uh, I have the system defined 
as um, r, this is my z axis, this is x axis, this is y axis. So, this is this angle is theta and the angle that it makes to the projection of this point on x y plane is phi. So, I am now showing the 2 p radial function over here. This is what we had uh, discussed and this is its functional form. So, I know how this radial function will change as, as I increase r from r equals 0 which is over here that means, the nucleus is here and the electron is um, moving uh, radially. So, a different value of r how this radial function changes I know that here I show. Now, what I am showing here are the 3 angular function corresponding to L equals 1. So, you remember when L equals 1 I have 3 different values of m that is 0 plus 1 and minus 1. So, these are the 3 functions y 1 1, y 1 0 and y minus 1. One thing that you would notice is that these functions are in the complex form. So, in particular in case of phi coordinate they are, they are written in complex. I can instead of writing y 1 minus 1 or this in the instead of writing them in the complex form, I can convert them to the so called real form. So, here I am defining p x, p y, p z which is very we are very familiar with it as a linear combination of p minus p plus and p my, uh, that gives me p x and p y and p z is equivalent to p 0. When I do this transformation that means, I go from come from imagine a uh, complex function to the set of real function, I then see a sin theta cos phi or sin theta sin phi term for p x p y and I have a cosine theta for p z term. So, you see when phi value is phi is pi by 2, then this cosine phi becomes a 0. When does phi becomes pi by 2? When phi is the angle of this project projection of this point onto x y plane uh, from x axis. So, pi phi will be pi by 2 when the point exists anywhere on the z y plane. So, I would see that when phi equals pi by 2 that means, the point is on y z plane I would see the wave function the angular part of the wave function becoming 0. So, therefore, I develop an angular node. Similarly, in this case for p y when phi is a 0 that means, when it is x on x z plane I develop an angular node. And this angular node if I have if I define a plane. So, on this plane the wave function vanishes, but the wave function exists above the plane and below the plane. So, what we are drawing is the famous uh, dumbbell shape of the p type of orbitals and similarly uh, for cosine theta this term will become 0 when theta equals pi by 2 and theta is pi by 2 when we have uh, the point on x y plane. So, therefore, this also develops another angular coordinate. So, with since we have an ang, uh, angular node in x y plane we call this orbital p z when the angular plane is on x z plane we call this orbital p y and when the angular plane is on y z we call this orbital p x. So, in today's lecture we discussed the radial nodes and the angular nodes of hydrogen atoms uh, eigenfunctions. We will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you for your attention.